what's cracking. I'm Nick Danger, aka Nick Digital, and you are now tuned into the art of MV. Let's get it cracking, man. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. And thanks for watching my video. Give me a thumbs up on the way in, man, and like the channel, subscribe to the channel, and share the channel, and leave it all in the comment section. This is just going to be a short video, man, about a little update on the channel. I've been away for a minute, and I'm working on some updates. I'll give you uh, some upgrades to the studio, and uh, some transitioning for the channel itself, man. It's kind of cool, man, into some things, and we're going to talk a little why the MV1 Verse Lab is turning out to be exactly what I wanted, even though it seems like I'm the minority on that. Um, a lot of people, the MVs aren't their cup of tea. And a lot of people who own MVs, they just want more. <laughs> they just want more, man. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get into it, man, because from MV to MV, I'm fine. MV1 Verse Lab is going to become my mobile version of this very quickly. And uh, just some thoughts on it, so let's get it cracking. man so one thing I was wondering uh, from equipment to equipment we are who we are right um, you have your own frequency so when you're coming at something like producing a, a, a song and you're constantly trying to imitate someone else's frequency uh, you're not going to be satisfied with what you're doing because it's not what it's not you right so me, I'm a, I'm a musician, non-musician, which means I'm a self-taught bass player. Uh, I can program keys, I can program drums, but I have no real musical uh, training. You know what I mean? Uh, everything I do is basically me pulling out of thin air and from records and from sounds. And I mean, sometimes I'm sampling, sometimes I'm using a synthesizer, sometimes I'm just playing what's in my head. I just pull it out of thin air, man, like a lot of people do. And that's that. those are the best ideas, right? The ones you just pull out of thin air, and before you know it, a quiet, room's, a quiet room becomes a room filled with music, right? And that's what you want. But with the MV, and you're able to create a sound all your own because it has a sound, plus there's not a whole bunch of people teaching how to use an MV in a certain particular way. So we were in a conversation about the VS uh, series recorders and some people in some of the uh, electronics groups were were noting how professional those things sound and I kind of chimed in and it's that's one of the values that they did with the MV series 8800 and 8000. Is they, they put those VS8, it's like a built-in VS880 in this thing. So. I'm working on a, a beat, which you're gonna, gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna um, wound up dealing with this. So I'm, I'm here doing this, right? We'll, we'll get this out of there. So I'm looking at this. Let's uh, see these. So I'm just playing this little line right here on my uh, on my integra. And once, like I told you, like I like to do, I hit the effects button, put it on the input, and I'm just going to start playing with what I like, right? Let's just change it up. And these are the things, these deep effects, and a very honorable mention to the mastering presets on here, especially the cassette and the phonograph. All that stuff comes from the VS880 and the effects, the stuff that you need for post-production, right? Go through this library here. I love going through these. So let's try. That's the analog digital cores. Let's see what this other one's like. That's the digital cores. Not so much. Let's skip that one and go to that. My favorite, the four, the Dimension D four twenty four but I mean three twenty four button cores. And so this is just on the input. So just mind you, 
you can now sample this or just record it as audio, which will be sampling it, because if you record it as on the audio tracks, you can turn that into a WAV file. And then you can make this one hit into a partial and just take it to another planet, right? Let's go, let's look at the Flanger. Flanger, the vintage 325 Flanger in the MV8000 is very good for a couple of reasons. Not only is it real authentic, and it's it's a spitting image of the original rack mount version of Soundwise, but it has its own chorus in the edits where you can turn off the flanger part and just use the chorus on here, which is pretty buttery, right? Let's get back out of the library. What else do I got? Let's use this other, this other guitar flanger, right? And I just like, this is one of the values that you get when you get an MV8000-8800. Now, don't get me wrong, the MV1 Verse Lab has a great, um, has the same thing going on as well. It's based on uh, this up here, the uh, VS series, the newer VS series. Let's see what the 80s phaser looks like. Let's see what the 80s phaser. You can go all kinds of places with that shit, right? Just for this, uh, for this one, we're gonna leave it on delay, uh, analog delay, cares, Co analog delay and chorus. And I'm gonna show you guys something that proves that you are who you are, and you're just you, right? So we're gonna unmute, we're gonna unsolo this one, we're gonna mute this one. music about videos right so now this one is 141.17 in tempo and has uh the grid res resolution is at 120 right now and I'm, I'm on the grid right now for the most part let me see I think i'm on the grid with all most of the drums yeah yeah we're on the grid and being on the grid is nice and tight right so when i'm over here this sequencer doesn't have the detail that this one that this one over here has right it just doesn't and so when we're talking about how how do you translate an idea that you may have had here over here well one thing i want to show you different keyboards uh one's coming from the integra it's a patch called uh, beyond the move and the same beyond the move is inside the integra set i mean inside the um the mv1 verse lab as well and that's not the only patch i kind of found and i'm not saying that the v1 the mv1 verse lab is uh filled up with all used up no brand new sounds all old rolling shit because that's not true but they do have some of the top notch probably most used and some of the you know the textures that that make hits basically in this thing so to understate that would be would be trash since my studio is based on rolling sound having this is like having my studio in the backpack right so now let me say let me stop this the sequence that you heard running is at about 141.17 on my mv8000 and usually when i do uh, tracks that have that kind of speed <clears throat> that's what I use but in the MV1 verse lab when you when you use that fast tempo the quantize works a bit different so does that mean I can't do this in here uh, at the speed that I like well I can't do it the way I do it in the MV8000 but I can do my own version of it inside the MV1 verse lab now that's basically at halftime. And that's just understanding how how quantize works on certain grids. So if you're familiar, then you, you should know that any sample or or song that's at 140, half of that will be 70. And you should be able to slow it down to that and still be able to do it. So that's just a, a no tap tempo, just me knowing what I wanted. I ran the metro the metronome 
and I heard the same beat in my head just with a slower tempo right basically the same pattern not quite being able to translate similar ideas right and of course this sounds a bit different it's a different drum set but you get the picture right it's the way it's done the way you're able to translate creative flow from one MV to the next and it's not that hard people make it harder than what it is they make it more deep than what it is because you can't do MPC stuff over here I find this sequencer very easy to deal with it has its limitations but as evidence here those limitations don't really stop you from being you you just gotta find a way to be you on the MV1 verse lab right throw the drums back in there But this is how when you're making beats about videos go, man. You just kind of, kind of run some things through, and and some things you keep, some things you don't, man. But uh, once again, man, translated, you know, same type of track, you know what I mean? Some people say the um, some of the rolling sounds that they bring over, oh, it doesn't sound like the old 5080. The 5080 sounds better than the 5080 and the Integra. I think that's subjective. Um, I think the both of the modules themselves sound different because different outputs um, are different on the tail end of the each of these modules, whatever's going out the max, because you have a master bus going out of the Integra 7 that has a, a, a slightly cleaner sound than the original 5080. And the 5080, even though it has its own set of PCM side, it still is going through the outputs of the Integra 7 like that. So I think that's the main reason that it sounds uh, so much cleaner. But anyway, man. I wanted to talk about, um, from uh, another perspective, uh, the, the direction of the channel. That'll work. So I'm working on some stuff for the channel, right? And uh, I'm, I'm working on some, some angles that just aren't covered. Shout out to Altar Beats again, man. He's the only guy I see moving around with his MV, and uh, he's <laughs> uh, his, his MV MV got a MV got a light a nice bit of wear on it, man. That MV has been through some things, and I've only taken mine out once. I took it to Panama on a vacation about uh, about two years ago when I first got it, and I was learning it at that point. So this time when I take it out, I'm actually taking it out. I book time at a studio because I think that's one of the things in here that nobody says about is taking your studio on the road, your entire studio. So how am I going to get this accomplished? Well, as you hear, this uh, particular sequence that's running is a sequence that I made in MV a long time ago. Once again, making making beats for a video. Uh, that's all MV8000. The electric piano, the drums, everything that's going is, is, uh, is MV8000. I'm going to have all the MV8000 beats that are looped like this. Like this is in a bunch of patches. Check it out. So I got this part. And it's all tempoed. It's tempoed out and everything. And having this the SP555 uh, along with the MV1 Verse Lab, I can MIDI the SP to the MV1 Verse Lab to loop these into the audio and just kind of take my MV8000 on the road by taking this on the road. I'm going to have my SP with me as well, though. So taking these two on the road to a, uh, an undisclosed location in on the West Coast, that's where my next... Um, uh, live and uh, not my next one. I got a two. I got this video that I'm going to upload, and I have one that I'm editing right now. And we're going to take the channel into a whole new direction. Um, so I'm kind of weird about going in um, a direction that something that I, I can enjoy doing. I'm going to tell you why. Because I've seen the the YouTubeization of music creation. Once again, I've seen the YouTubeization of music creation to the point where it's content creation. So music is just a vital part of the whole thing, but not the actual product, right? Music is no longer a physical product. You're selling people a vibe, right? So now the only actual products people are selling are courses, 
and sounds, right? And I never really got into the sounds for the reasons I just showed you. Basically, I have all the sounds I want right in here. I mean, I don't really need to sample anything. If I do sample, I got four powerful samplers. Uh, well, really five if you count my, uh, the wave recorder on my interface. Um, so there's no need for, to buy sample packs. I told you the Phantom has all the trap drums you're going to need, and so does the Verse Lab. Um, it's going to get any lo-fi if that you want can be done with the 8000 and the SP555. So thus, the beats that I'll be, I've been playing for the videos are all beats that are made for videos, and the ones that you don't hear that much again um, are the ones that I actually made it to going to the studio where I'm going to take this and we're going to finish whole songs man and I'm going to show you my production in a whole new light so uh, stay tuned for more videos about the MV on the road uh, at the first stop on my studio tour which is on the west coast and uh, I'll catch you on the next video